great. HSM students, how are you? Thank you so much for connecting with us today through this video. But I want to have a conversation with you today. But to start all off, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever been stuck? You know, stuck. I sure have. I've been stuck so many times, it's actually quite embarrassing to think of it all the times. Like for example, when I was a teenager living at home, I took my dad's snowmobile one day and I'm just kind of ripping through the trails and I decided to go off trail, you know, you know, to go where no snowmobile has gone before. And I end up getting stuck in deep snow. And at the time, I was a little guy with a big snowmobile and it, it, I just could not get this machine unstuck. Another time I got stuck wasn't really my fault, but there was a time when we lived in southern Ontario around Toronto area and it almost seemed like once a week, if not more, you were always stuck in traffic. The worst. But there's this one particular time that I really got stuck. I was just a kid with my two older sisters and we decided that we would go berry picking. Now, I don't think it was my idea because to this day, I don't like berry picking. But in this one particular day, I found myself berry picking with my sisters and we were on our way home. In order to get home, we had to cross this bog. And you know, I was the little brother. I was the one who constantly aggravated my sisters. Actually, I was really good at it. And so this one day I decided that as we were crossing this bog, I would just run off. I would just run ahead of them. But as I ran ahead of them, I wasn't paying attention and I ended up falling into this bog hole, okay? Think quicksand, but boggy, muddy, gross water. And it would just kind of like sucked me in. And I found myself in a predicament. All of a sudden, my anxiety kind of spiked. Because remember, we said that anxiety exists to tell us something. Well, in that moment, my anxiety was telling me, dude, you are in danger. Dude, you are stuck. You need to get unstuck. But I couldn't. So my sisters, on the other hand, they were feeling their own anxiety was like, we need to return little brother the way that we brought him. You know, we had to bring him back home. So they worked really hard to get me unstuck. Now, I don't remember exactly how they got me unstuck, but I do know that they rescued me. I do know that somehow they were able to pull me out of this bog hole. And when I got out, man, was I a mess. But here's the deal. Some of you listening to me right now, that's you. No, I didn't say that you were stuck in a bog hole, but you feel stuck, especially when it comes to your faith. You kind of feel like that everything was going so well, you know, but now you just kind of feel stuck. I mean, there was a time when, you know, you were praying, but now you're just not. There was a time when you were reading your Bible and now you don't even know where your Bible is located. I mean, there was a time when you were a little bold and confident about your faith when you went out and went to school, but now not so much. There was a time when you were so connected with your small group and with your youth ministry, but now it seems like such a difficulty just to watch the videos. I get it. You feel stuck and you don't like it and you don't understand why you are stuck the way that you're stuck and it's frustrating for you and all you want to do is get better but you're not certain how to do it you know what you should do but for some reason you don't do it and you're like ah oh, i am staying stuck i want to show you something in the bible and it's found in romans chapter 7 and here's this guy his name was paul and the guy like wrote like most of the New Testament, so you think he would have it all together, but not so. Look what he wrote. He said this in Romans chapter 7, verse 21. He says, I have discovered this principle of life. What I want, I want to do what is right, 
but I end up inevitably doing what is wrong. So he's saying, I want to do what's right, but why is it I always seem to do what is wrong? And he says that I love God's law with all my heart. And like you who feel stuck in your faith right now, you're like, but Roger, I still love God. I still want to follow him, you know, but I don't understand why I don't do what I should be doing. And that's what Paul is saying right here. And then he goes on, he says this, he goes, there seems to be another power within me that's at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. And he goes, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? This guy is feeling stuck. He is feeling so like, ah, I want to do this, but I end up doing that. I want to say this, but I end up saying that. I want to live for God, but then I chicken out. I know I should pray, but I don't. I know I should be understanding God's word, but I don't. I'm stuck. And it feels like you're just being pulled down. Like me in that bog as a kid, just being pulled down further and further and needing someone to help me get out. So what are you to do? If you feel like that right here, right now, as you're listening, what do you do? Well, let's go back to Paul. Look what he said. He says this in verse 24, sorry, 25. He says, thank God. I love that. He says, hey, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. I'm so stuck. What am I supposed to do? He goes, thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And just as Jesus was the answer for Paul, he's also the answer for you in your stuckness? Stuckness. Is that a word? Sure. Let's just go with it, okay? In our stuckness, you know? So where is God, you may be asking? He's right there with you. You see, I read ahead of my sisters and I got myself stuck, you know? But they showed up and they helped me out. And it's the same way with God. You may feel like right now you're stuck and you're alone, but you're not. God is right there with you and he wants to help you to get unstuck. Now see, when my sisters were trying to pull me out of that bog and save me from certain death, you know, I had a responsibility in that moment. I just couldn't sit there with my hands by my side and go, help me, help me. No, I had to reach out. I had to put the effort in. I had to reach out for them to save me, for them to be able to pull me out. I had to be a part of the solution. And it's the same way with you getting unstuck in your relationship with God. You have a responsibility to reach out to God and say, God, I need your help to get me unstuck. So I'm going to reach out to you, right? Because when you're stuck, the goal is to get unstuck. So the question is, do you want to get unstuck in whatever it is that you're stuck in that's keeping you from moving forward in your faith? I hope you do. Because see, Sin, all it wants to do is pull us down and to keep us stuck and make us ineffective for God. But God says, I'm right there. I want to pull you out. And see, here's the thing. When my sisters pulled me out of that bog, I was saved. I was rescued, but I was in such a mess. And listen, and when God pulls you out of whatever it is that's keeping you stuck right now, you may feel like you're a little bit of a mess, but here's the deal. God is so good at dealing with our mess. He is so good at helping us to get cleaned up. I mean, I went home and I was able to get cleaned up, you know, and my parents helped me to do that. And God wants to do that for you. He wants to help you to not only get unstuck, but probably also deal with maybe any messes that you created while you were stuck. You know, deal with the problem. So here's the deal, right? You don't have to stay stuck. Yeah, did you hear me? 
You don't have to stay stuck. You can get unstuck with God's help and you can keep moving your faith forward. That is the good news. You can call out to God. Check this out. One more verse for you. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. It says, sorry, verse 13. It says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And see, that is just not calling out to him just to have him forgive you of your sins in the moment of salvation, but it's in every circumstance that you can call out to God and he will save you. He will rescue you. He will help you out. That's the type of God that he is because he's so in love with you. He is so committed to the relationship. Listen, I used to bug my sisters really badly, but they would never want any harm come to me. So when I was in danger, they stepped up and they were the sisters that I needed them to be in that moment. And they rescued me. And listen, after all that I put my sisters through, they should have just left me in the bog. And sisters, if you're listening, thanks for rescuing me. I really appreciate it. But hey, back to you. Here's the deal. God is not giving up on you. No matter what you have done or what you haven't done to keep your faith alive in the last little while, God is still with you. He still loves you. He still cares about you. He still has a plan for you. He still has a purpose for you. But he says right now to you today, hey, let's get unstuck. And you need to get unstuck by, yeah, you heard me, calling out to God and asking him to help you. And when God pulls you out of whatever mess that you're stuck in right now, right, realize that you're going to have to do a little bit of work. And that's okay because the Bible tells us that God enables us to stand firm in Christ. And that's his job, and he's gonna do it. But like I said, you have a responsibility as well. So I wanna give you a couple things to help you, not only to get unstuck, but to keep you from getting more stuck, <laughs> okay? So follow with me right now. So number one, own it. If you're stuck right now and you don't feel like you're faith is going anywhere, just own it. Just admit it. Call out to God. I know I said that already, but I need you to get this part. Call out to God and say, God, I am stuck. And the next thing I want you to do is I want you to restart some of these great spiritual habits, okay? So if you're not praying, I want you to start praying. You're like, but Roger, I don't know how. Listen, just talk to God. And here's my challenge for you. Pray five minutes. Seriously, five minutes have a conversation with God for five minutes you can do that right so hit the pause button on your life five minutes every day and just talk to God right and just let him know that you need his help you know and the next thing maybe you've stopped reading your Bible for whatever reason then I want you to start yeah reading your Bible and you're like I don't know where to start like so many times I've told you hey read the Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, just dive into Jesus. Or maybe it's just reading one verse a day. You know, open up that Bible app, you know that verse of the day they give you, just read that. But what I'm trying to say is just read something from God's word, you know? Just pray, if it's for five minutes, read, even if it's just one verse, it's going to be huge for you. And maybe there's a little change that you can make, that little small change in your life. Like, how can you be 2% better tomorrow in living your faith out loud? You know, it's not about these big moments. Sometimes these big moments, they come from little moments at a time. And then maybe for some of you, you need to reconnect back with your youth ministry. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Listen, here's the deal, we miss you. And we want you to reconnect with your youth ministry. We are here to help you to navigate your faith, to help you deal with your doubts, to help you to move your faith forward. You can do this. And not only is God there to help you get unstuck, hey, we're here to help you. Ultimately though, you kind of need Jesus, right? Because he's the one who can really get you unstuck. We're just here to cheer you on. But here's the deal, see this? I got this piece of rope here, all right? So let's just pretend this rope represents your life, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little, we're gonna put a little small mark here on this rope, okay? We're just gonna color it in. I hope you can see this. 
right when I hold it up. Okay? So, see this little dot right here? Do you see it? Okay? All right? That's the moment that you're living in right now, that you feel stuck in. But look at how much more that's left to your life. Don't stay here stuck, okay? Get unstuck in this moment and live all these other moments in pushing your faith forward, all right? You got that? I hope that kind of sticks with you. But I want to talk to one more group of people listening today. And that's you who are doing well in your faith. And to you, I say, great job, right? So proud of you. But you have a job to do. If you're listening to me today and you are, you are doing well in your faith and you're living God out loud and you're praying and you're reading your Bible and you're making the changes in your life that you need, then can I tell you, you have a responsibility to help your friends who are stuck. Listen to me. If right now, if you have a friend that you know that's stuck, and are struggling in their faith journey, it's your responsibility to come alongside them and say, hey, let me help you. Hey, I noticed that you, know, you haven't been connecting with the youth ministry. Hey, I kind of noticed that you know, you're saying and doing things that you normally don't say or do. Hey, I noticed in the last little while that maybe you haven't been praying like you should. Or calling your friends out and say, hey, are you really reading the Bible like you should? You know, being a real friend to your friends, it's huge. So here's the deal. If you're doing good in your faith, please be there for your friends. Not in an arrogant way, no, but in a loving, caring, friendship way and say to them, hey, why don't we pray? Hey, why don't we do this devotion together? Hey, why don't we show up to that next Zoom call together? Hey, why don't we show up to that group together and continue to encourage one another in our faith? That's what you need to do. See, there's this verse in the Bible in Proverbs that says, as iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. Let's kind of switch that around a little bit. You know, when a friend sees a friend stuck, a friend helps his friend get unstuck, okay? Let's do it that way. But guys, here's the deal. I get it. Some of you right now just feel stuck in your faith, but I want you to know you don't have to stay there because God is good and he still loves you and he's willing to help you reach out and ask him for his help and do whatever you can to move your faith forward and know full well that not only is there a God who loves you, but you are part of a youth ministry that will do whatever it can to help you to keep moving forward in your relationship with God. Can I pray for you? Cool. Hey God, I just want to say thank you to every student that's listening right now that may feel stuck in their faith. God, I pray that they will just own it and just call it to you for help. And that, God, that they will bring other people around them that will help them to get unstuck and move their faith forward. Yeah, ultimately, God, they need to start talking to you. They need to start applying your word to their lives. And they need to start saying no to the sin influences that's trying to pull them down right now. And God... I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just speak really real and become so loud in their lives right now and let them know that you love them. And as they put their trust in you, you can get them unstuck and keep moving them forward in this amazing faith journey that you have for them. And God, for students right now that are doing so well in their faith, I thank you for them. But God, may they see their responsibility to speak into the lives of those around them. So God, I just pray a huge blessing on HSM right now, and that may you keep them safe and keep them unstuck as they keep living for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, listen straight up. Thank you for listening today, but here's the deal. I want you to like this video if you liked it. I want you to share it with someone that you feel that needs to hear it. And I love to have your comments. So right there in the comment section, comment section, let me know what you thought of today's video as we continue to do our best to put God's word out to you. So until next time, be good, have fun, and definitely keep living God out loud. Love you all. Bye for now.